All right, hello everybody. My name is John Benderwaffles Algets, and welcome to this speed development commentary where we are going to be looking at the small town Dungeons and Dragons map made within Dungeon Painter Studio. This is surprisingly one of my more uh, popular speed developments. I didn't actually expect it to gain the audience that it did, but you know what? Whatever, we will. Uh, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. It's actually, uh, I'm not super thrilled with this map. Uh, I think that I could do better today, but let's just go ahead and let's take a look at what's going on with this. So what we have here is just your your basic like little small town. And I start things off by building the sort of structures first and all of the interiors first. And I do this for a very specific reason, and that is that I want to be able to have my structures defined the way that I want them in my head without having to worry so much about the actual like layout of the sort of like, you know, geology, the um, topographical features as it were. So I'm building the the sort of structures separately off to their own little side and then I'll, I'll sort of get the, the grass and everything in a little bit. Now, Dungeon Painter Studio is a little bit different from making maps within like RPG Maker because obviously this is meant for you know, Dungeons and Dragons campaigns and things of that nature. So it's very much grid based. So it's all top down and you kind of have to think about things in terms of you're looking directly over them as opposed to RPG Maker where you're kind of looking at them a little bit from the side and over. It's like a RPG Maker has a perspective that doesn't actually exist within uh, reality and all just sort of classic RPGs have that kind of thing where it's like you're able to see the front perfectly and you're able to see the top perfectly which is not something like that's physically impossible but uh that's a whole other thing here this little like tavern that i'm trying to build here took me just way longer than it probably should have to kind of like figure out the spacing and allowing people to be able to walk through and you know figure out how i want the the in part to kind of lay out it was just sort of a pain in the ass uh i think that i would do the in completely differently i would probably make it bigger just to allow for more movement for the players more empty spaces um but i didn't really do that this time around uh, one thing i do really 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 like about dungeon painter studio and i wish that more like map making programs would allow for this is sort of a layer system that we have. Um, I want to talk about this circular building here in a second, but we're going to talk about the layers right now. So the layers work very much like you would see in something like Photoshop or some other just like image editing software, which really when you break it down, that's sort of what this is in a lot of ways, because these assets are literally just like images with alpha transparency and you're able to place them in the program knows to sort of ignore the alpha transparencies and sort of just, you know, allow you to just stack different images on top of each other, which, you know, it's super simplistic on the back end, but on the front end, it allows for just some, some great uh, bits of customization. And I really, really love it. But a layer system, you know, it allows you to define what's on top of what, you know, how the different objects interact with each other. And it just, it allows for creative freedom to such a degree that like, I can't, I cannot gush enough about how great layer systems are and i wish that more and more map editing programs would allow for it just like i wish that more map editing programs would allow for circular buildings like we have here which actually this building doesn't get used in the final map which is a little hilarious to me because i take so much time like trying to figure out how to get the walls to curve and how to get them to like fit correctly it's trying to make like a temple sort of thing because i was making this map initially for a campaign that i was working on with some friends, we we're gonna play it via tabletop simulator. And I knew that there was gonna be a sort of like cathedral, like temple kind of thing, but I ultimately didn't wind up putting it in the map for some reason. I don't actually remember why, but, and now uh, we come to the part where I'm sort of messing with the grass textures, trying to find one that I really like and just sort of getting the basic outline of the town figured out or not outline layout is what I mean. So I found a grass tile that I liked and now I'm going to be drawing a very, um, uh, unfortunate looking dirt path. Uh, <laughs> I go back and I watch this back and I'm just like, mm, that's, that's a questionable shape. Um, it was one of those things where I didn't think about it at the time, but, uh, yeah, that, um, I don't think I need to say what that looks like. 
I feel like you know. But ultimately, in the final map, it doesn't doesn't look like that as much. So uh, I'm not too overly concerned about it. Man, that's just, it's really unfortunate. Uh, so now we come to the part where I'm adding shadows, just giving the map, uh, just giving the parts of the map a little bit of depth, um, allowing, and again, this is where you get that sort of object interaction, which is really, really great to see. Um, and again, it it's all because of the layer system. So now we're just kind of going through, making everything look purdy. And pretty soon here, we're gonna actually be placing the buildings. So now we just, you know, select the buildings, we're moving them around and we're placing them kind of where I sort of just want the buildings to be ultimately in the final map. Um, this one, so. Now, one thing that I don't like about this map before we get into the trees is that everything's on one side of a dirt path. Like no city would actually, or no city, no town, no village, nothing like that would be built where like all the buildings are just in a row. Um, that largely just comes down to the fact that this was sort of, I think it was like my second or third time using Dungeon Painter Studio and I didn't have a ton of experience with stuff. So I didn't, when I was building the bu the buildings, I didn't think to myself, oh, I should pre-rotate these because I can't rotate the whole thing, um, as a whole. You might be able to now, but back then, I think that's why it ultimately wound up like this was because I couldn't rotate the whole building. Um, you might be able to, as I said, you might be able to now, but uh, in hindsight, if I was going back to redo this map, which I might actually, um, I would put the buildings all around like the dirt path. And I think that, you know, I didn't actually ultimately wind up using this map in my campaign. We actually just like drew everything in tabletop simulator. Um, but I think in the future, if I was making maps for my campaign, I would certainly pre-rotate buildings so that I could get you know, a much more like spread out and varied sort of city layout. So here we go. We're placing down trees. Everyone always says like, John, you, you just really like trees. And yeah, I do. They're, they're good. Like for filling up space that I don't necessarily want the players to like be wandering through, or I just, you know, I don't like dead space. So I'm going to be filling it up. Uh, and I also, I try to vary it up, putting rocks, putting bushes, different things like that, just to fill in spaces, just to, you know, make it look a little bit more alive, a little bit more interesting. Um, and as you notice, I'm having like some of the trees sort of hang off the edge. And that's because as you can see in that little like section there, I'm going to be like, here, let's see if we can go back. Uh, I'm gonna be resizing the map to fit a specific like size because when you export the image you don't want to export all the like dead empty space so you size it down to be like defining where your map is and i'm cutting off the bits of tree that are hanging off the edge so i'm fine with it like hanging off it looks a little sloppy during the actual map creation but i don't really care in the end because again it's being chopped off so just kind of throwing them in there just trying to make them look good just trying to give you sort of a, a very lively like foresty feel and the final export we're getting a uh, png uh specified for roll 20 although that doesn't really matter you can uh within dungeon painter studio you can choose like to what sort of like online role-playing program you're going to be using which is super useful if you're if you're doing that sort of stuff as i said i was using tabletop simulator so none of that really matters to me um as long as i just get an image that I can set as the uh, as the board doesn't really much matter beyond that. So now just saving everything out, and there's our final map, our final half of a town. Because really, there should be something down this area. Like there should be more buildings. But that's basically how that works, guys. You can export your map. You know, get it out there. Get it into a program that allows you to put a grid over it, and then get your little miniatures, and you know. Play your Dungeons and Dragons, which if you are making RPGs or you're making games at all and you don't have any experience playing Dungeons and Dragons, there is something wrong with you because that is like the standard that you should at least have some basic understanding and some basic experience with Dungeons and Dragons before you like really dive super deep into RPGs because um, it's just it's such a wonderful treasure trove of 
ideas and inspiration. Um, at the very least, if you're not going to play, go out and buy the books. Um, they can be kind of expensive, but just get the books, read through them, see how the systems work, and they'll give you a lot of ideas. Like, honestly, I... I recommend to every game developer in hell, every just storyteller, even if you don't want to develop games, if you just want to like create your own worlds, Dungeons and Dragons books are a great place to go um, because they're just a, a fantastic resource for all of that sort of stuff. But anyways, guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like uh, and hit the subscribe button if this is the sort of content that you like to see. Also, you can click the little buttons over there on the side to go to other videos that I've made, such as movie reviews and different things like that. Uh, and uh, I just hope that you guys have a good one, and I'll catch you next time.